to the agenda. I would just like to put on the agenda that we be able to uh, set a meeting with the housing and the education committee to discuss process that are due to the We could probably take that up under uh, town boards and officials. Perfect. Um, what we should probably also do is uh, we should reorganize here. David Bemis to be the chair. Oh, I'll second that. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, minutes from the prior meeting. I'll make a motion that we accept it. I'll accept it. I did not say motion. All those in favor? Right. Aye. Um, town meeting minutes. Do we want to come back to that? You want to look those over? I did. Oh, you did. And everything seems fine. Okay. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Yeah. Yep. Right. I will second that. All okay. those in favor of approving the town meeting minutes? Aye. 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 Public comment. Uh, mostly on the uh, town meeting, uh, a couple things there. I think we're going to do with the school, actually. Uh, one thing that was not mentioned is that uh, Women Northeast has made a very strong proposal to the state on Rack 46 to remain an alternate structure supervisory union under uh, Section 5C of the law. Um, they've, uh, they've, they've made the uh, and all of the, since I've been, I've been following this from nearly the beginning, and there was no stone that was left uh, unturned, um, they made the point that uh, we've been uh, we've been meeting a lot of the requirements of the law as it is, and we've uh, outlined some areas where we hope to improve on what we have. Um, the state should be deciding; uh, they're, they're due to decide somewhere in June or July. Uh, if they don't accept the Women Northeast proposal, I'm not sure who they will accept, but uh, we don't know until it happens. Uh, the study committee that was mentioned by Superintendent Chris Kibbe is uh, a study committee to look into um, uh, changing uh, the Athens and Grafton uh, K through six uh, to a um, going from a joint uh, just joint school contract to a. Uh, Union school contract, like much like the high school. Um, Chris was talking about a whole bunch of stuff that wants to be You might almost think that this is a study committee to look at Athens crap and what's missed emerging, and, and then no, that is not the case. And, uh, uh, you know, Westminster is a uh, remote town in terms of in terms of access, and they're also a high spending town. It's, it's not something that uh, would be in favor of Athens crap. Um, the other thing uh, somebody mentioned that, that uh, 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 Rockingham is the only one that voted in favor of consolidation because it would be tax savings to them. Uh, it seems logical uh, at the outset because, yeah, a lot of seventh and eighth grade resources be returning back into the uh, Rockingham district. But there, we, we saw that there were a lot of expenses that would be added too, mostly teachers and support staff. Uh, overall savings on a $29 million budget from the four town school districts combined was, was uh, only 1.4%. Uh, but um, one thing that's uh, important to remember, and I was a little slow to, uh, to realize this myself, um, we are part of a statewide school district that is supported by a statewide grand list. Um, and so it's actually the uh, state funding formula that would uh, determine the Rockingham's tax rate. And there, the savings was not there. It was small fractions of one penny per hundred dollars. It, it, it just wasn't there. Well, I, I, I don't know because I, I didn't make the comment or anything, but, but what about the, the bonds that uh, Rockingham has out on the uh, middle school and the central school? I think that was what people were thinking, that we would then be paying on those bonds. Well, we, we, we would have been. Um, that, I, I but, think that's but, where the, the tax savings, I, at the time, I think that's so going to be from the tax itself, but why not have to pay those bonds? But not yeah, the as business, much of them. Yeah, they would only then... But the business, business office uh, itself, you know, they ground out all the numbers for the tax rate in various towns. I know it seems counterintuitive, but we 
because like, again, we all pay into a, a state school system that, that's funded by a state grant for this, and they, and they send the money back. So, um, and I'm still trying to understand the logic of, the, of some parts of the state fund, funding formula. But Rockingham tax uh, their, their tax rate did, did not decrease. Uh, Noticeably, I mean, there's almost no change in the logging and tax rate that was, that was uh, estimated. Um, so I'm, I mean, I'm not sure that it would have, but I think that was what there was. I, I remember at the time that that was a point of discussion that they had those bonds out there. Um, between Rocking and Westminster, there were $12, $12 million in uh, outstanding bonds. So, I'm sorry, do you, I should ask this question of Chris Kibby on town meeting. About 14 years ago, when we did merge together as a joint district, not a union district, there was a reason for it, and that at that time, the joint district was much better for both of our towns. Do you know what has changed to? Well, I guess this committee is going to find out. We're going to we're going to see what's changed in the last you know over the last decade and a half, and we'll see what the arguments in favor are and what the arguments against are. I mean, we looked into it for a very long time, and. Hmm. Uh -huh. Anything else? No. No. Uh, no, that's it. Kudos to the road crew. It's been a tough winter. They've done a fantastic job. Twenty-four-seven. They ain't over yet. Yeah, I was gonna say it's not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> Kudos. Um, yeah. Nope. Um, just two things. Um, I've appointed um, Hannah to be my assistant treasurer again. Mm -hmm. And also, I just wanted to remind everybody about the rabies clinic on March 31st from 10.30 to 12. Okay. Sure. 10.30 10 to 12? Yes. We're on public comments. You have No. I called on you last because you got no last house. <laughs> I know. I got that. I just was making sure I knew what you were on because I didn't know if you had already whipped through that nope. so fast. No. Nope. <laughs> annual, annual appointments. Um, for do it as always one motion well it'll be like three but uh is one motion for the fence viewers the housing grant committee um the uh surveyor wooden coal the tree warden the town service officer Wyndham regional commission emergency management director and the um, southern windsor Wyndham solid waste management district representative do we, I will make a motion that we appoint. And the budget committee? No, 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 we're going to do these separately. Okay. The, the individual years. Okay. But I, That's fine then. I will make a motion that we uh, appoint uh, the people as listed. I'm sorry, but I'm Just want to make sure you remember um, the Southwest, Southern Windsor Wyndham Waste Management is you instead of John. Yes, yep, I did. That. I did that. Um, all right, Tom made the motion. I'll second it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. All right. 
Uh, and then we'll go to Planning Commission. I'll nominate uh, Matt Perry for a uh, three-year term. It, it, we put out a thing to, in case anybody wanted to, you know, wanted to do it. And I don't think anybody has applied for it. One second, I have a motion. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Will you do the planning commission again? Okay. I will nominate James Perry. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, and we do have three open Could you spots. Speak up. Oh, I'm sorry. We have three open spots. She said on the mm -hmm. planning commission, if somebody wants to. For people that resigned, <coughs> there's three open spots. We can have up to yeah. We can have up to nine people on mm -hmm. the planning commission. So uh, if anybody wants to, they can certainly uh, let let Darlene know, and we can go with that at a future meeting. Um, budget committee. Um, I'll nominate Janet Perry. Uh, I'll second that. Second. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. And I'll nominate James Trimble. Second. All those in favor? All right. Okay. The ones that like Mark weren't appointed, those are state appointed. Oh, okay. Um, so, yeah. we just just so So, if you have um, open positions still that you're interested in, Getting people forward, you can send us a list of what they are and maybe a brief like what's involved in the opinion so that they can get out. I think at this point, there are, um, if you want me, I can let you know there's uh, the planning commission at, at least three, and we can go up to nine, but at least three uh, resignations from there. And the Wyndham Regional Commission, uh, we have one opening that we can fill there. So. Boards and officials. Oh, uh, one more thing on annual appointments. We, we should uh, make a paper of record. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll make the motion for the Barber Reform, which we've had in the past. That is what we've had in the past, but not everybody gets the reform. No, I know. I don't think we have the reform and the uh, message. Well, if we do two, then we have to put it in both, and then that's going to be. I'm not sure. Do we, does everybody get the message? Three in their mailbox. Is it? Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, if you want to stick with reform, that's fine. But I, I would say there's maybe maybe 10, 15 percent of people in town that get the reformer. I doubt much more than that. Uh, we just went through this on the school board, and one of the problems with the weekly newspapers is uh, uh, timeliness of, of warning things, uh, special meetings. Um, and and uh, the, the annual meetings, like, I guess there's a certain window of time that you can't uh, warn it before and you can't warn it after. So the, because of that, we thought it was better to go to a, with a daily uh, paper versus a uh, once a week paper. And see the legal notices online in the reform if you go into that. Um, I, I thought 
thought they only had to send a letter if they were requesting a change. No, they have to send a request letter every year, and they have to have a petition. Petition only if it's a change. If it's a change. Okay. Somebody new wants it. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can certainly put that in there. Um, and I also, I think the uh, uh, senior center uh, would appoint a representative for that, and I'm not sure. Do we have one? We have before now, but um, but I don't know if uh, anybody is. Uh, I know uh, I thought Cookie might have done it at one point, but I'm not sure if she's doing it now or not. Do you know of anybody that goes there regularly from the town? I don't. All right. Uh, we'll go on to boards and officials. I'll call you first. This time. I can get home before the snow won't up in my driveway. Um, so, prior to town meeting we had started discussing in the committee if we were um, if the town did support us with the request that we had put in for funds this year um, what we were hoping to be able to accomplish with that um, what we would like to go after is um, to Two pieces of what was the stabilization work that we did not have funding enough funding to do, and that was um, drainage work around the building, and it was um, some work up in the roof, and not in the roof, but in the attic, the roof trusses up in that area of the building. Um, so, what copies? Material. This is all things that you've already received from reports from Chris Cole in the past, but there's three copies here of the, that is the stabilization project. So that was the abbreviated project that he um, put together for us to do to be able to get the building open. And what I've done there is highlighted the, um, things that were um, highlighted the things that were not accomplished. And then this is a more detailed discussion from his more in-depth assessment that was done prior to the project. So we started from here and then he sort of narrowed it down to that. So what we started talking about in the committee was how could we accomplish what was left that was you know, pretty important to do for um, stabilization of the building and sort of the long-term long -term, um, you know, survival of the building. And the drainage and the roof work were really important. Um, one idea we had was, I, I spoke with Chris Cole, who was the project manager for, for us, and you know explored these remaining pieces with him. And one idea we had was to talk with you folks, the board, and talk with Tom about the possibility of town labor um, with Tom's expertise and hopefully with the equipment that we have now. Um, possibly being able to uh, handle the drainage work that's needed around the building. Um, obviously, you know, materials and such um, costs of that would come out of the uh, meeting house funds, but perhaps town labor might be able to um, take care of some of that. So well, I know that's well, just. Well, just well, well, any thoughts on that? Yeah, well, look at it. See what, you're, yeah. see what they're talking about. Doing. Yeah. Well, and that's why I, I gave you those reports, Tom, because in there, I think there's there's a couple of different descriptions. I mean, initially, I think he was talking about wanting to put 
Um, but initially they thought they were going to be putting a wall in the back, and so then there was drainage described for that, but then that didn't happen. But I think some kind of, I think a curtain drain would be the right term, yeah. um, away from the building a little bit, down, and then um, I know part of what's described in there is being able to bring that, and, and I think it's on, it's on the wood side of the building, the Bemis property side of the building, and the Meeting House Road side of the building that drainage work is needed. And I think ultimately his suggestion that's in the, um, the second piece I gave you um, talks about you know, running it so that you're bringing that out to daylight somewhere you know, off to the side. Um, one of the things Chris mentioned was um, that if he was doing that as a contractor versus if the town itself was doing it, there might be, we might have more leeway as the town doing it than he might because we're then talking about going into the road drainage systems and if Tom's dealing with that, that might, I don't know, open up um, some flexibility in there that a contractor might not have for running something into it, but it's the town running it into the town's drainage system, so that might be uh, is that making any sense, Tom, to you in terms of? I mean, I think what little bit you're going to get out of that drain is never going to bother. <laughs> right, right. Um, but I think it's just a matter of, of yeah. practice. Because you're going to you're going to dig like that pipe way up before before you ever get out to that town debt. I'm sorry, in the beginning. You dig like that pipe way before, way before you get that, to that yeah. town. Oh, sure. To that drop off from yep. Yeah. Yep. 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 For sure. Now, there's something about a berm in there. He said in here a berm. Uh huh. That probably wouldn't be on our property, would it? Right, right. So that leads me to the other factor. Well, that's, yeah. Um, so, yeah, so there's three big pieces to all of this. So, where did I do them? I have, we did a um, heirs at law letter last year. You signed it, I signed it, and then we brought it to. Um, Sheila and she got signature of all of her siblings. So what we what we talked about was, um, and this is just a draft at this point. Um, it's not dated, but and I think I have a third copy of it somewhere here. Um, wanting to get a more long-term understanding with them. No, I guess I don't. I only have two. I don't know how that happens. Um, so that we don't have to keep going back every time, sort of like in the absence of being able to do a formal easement. Um, I, I framed this, and again, it's a draft, so I you know, appreciate any feedback on it, um, but frame this as if we're saying basically permission to access um, and do work from on that property that is not on our, it's not our property, it's on the Bemis Estate property. Um, and also indicating that we would be doing drainage work in there and that the land would be put back into, you know, as is condition afterwards. But, you know, I mean, that's where we will have to dig if we're digging or putting a berm or whatever. Yeah, I, um, I, just, behind there. I, I might just uh, caution saying as it, as it is now, if we're putting a berm in, then that's going to be different. Then. Right, right. So, so I don't think it's going to work. Well, I don't think a burn is going to help you any help. Uh, yeah, I don't think the burn. Because if, if, if the last time we were in there and fixed it, it already fell away from the building. And yeah. I don't think the water's coming in from the back side. I think it's coming in from the side. From the wood side? Right up on, uh, on this side of it. Not the road side, the opposite no. side. Yeah. Right on the side. Oh. The north side, right? The north yeah. side, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think the water, the more of the water that you're getting in there is coming off the roof. Uh-huh. When it's really raining hard, somebody's yeah. got to go up there and go under that building and see where it's coming in. We were just talking about that at Community yeah. Shepherd the other night. <laughs> well, it's, uh, you have the outside of the building, you have a low spot, and then you have a high spot, so, so yeah, it's funneling it right into that foundation. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I think more of it's coming in on the north side. But that's on the south side. <coughs> I'm, I'm, south. I'm talking about the south side. Yeah. The south side. I don't know how it can get in there. It's running away from the building. 
But it does. There isn't it because we were in there and we saw it coming in. There is an area where it kind of goes low and goes under, and, and, and so some will go in. But again, you may be right. Maybe you know comes off of the roof too. And I was going to say, is it only from the roof, or is there a spring under there too? I don't know. Well, that, that whole property is right out there. You go right out the front lawn right there and dig stone down, you can pop water up anyway. Uh huh. It's just it's wet. It, yeah. It's a it's a wet beach property yeah. up there. Yeah. Chris Cole thought that the. Um, that there was a much deeper crawl space initially that you be talking about the south is along the road so it'd be the west end um, you know the uphill section he, right. he feels a lot of silt has, has washed oh, yeah. down the hill through the stones on the, well, it, on it, the wood it, end of the building right right and and that was confirmed really when you think about it because they uncovered a dry laid stone foundation there um, and dug a lot of that stuff out. Matthew, uh, Nat, uh, Nathaniel came in and relayed those stones, and they put a lot of gravel, you know, or crushed stone around it. Well, before they did anything up there, when we when we went in and fixed out back on the yeah, weekend, I remember that the dirt was above that cell. Yep. And I think that's when most of the water was getting in there because it come right down there. Then we yep. dug it out, sloped it back, and run it down to the uh, south side of the building. But it was coming in when we were in there. That was long after you had done that ditch. Yeah. Sherry and I were in there in the springtime before any of the work was done. And there it was, there was like, like a, they were standing like, water in there, almost like a stream. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, so that is. So why don't we, why don't we have, once the snow melts, why don't you make an appointment with Tom to go up and look at it and mm -hmm. see what it is mm -hmm. and see what he thinks if the town can do it or not do mm -hmm. it and then we go we'll tackle it from there yeah. so it'd probably be a month at least. Yep. Maybe yeah, I think maybe July. Can't do it. <laughs> it could be this year. Who knows? We keep up with this <clears throat> Wednesday yeah. cycle. Well, I, think, uh, I think a stone uh, drainage that you out by it but the only problem you got to be real careful doing that you got to stay away from the stone foundation. Yeah. You got to stay out two or three feet away from it because they will cave in. If that's all sand underneath that stone, you dig down below it. You got a good chance of it sliding out from the bottom. Uh, and we just did it over John Corner. Over where? John Corner, uh -huh. John Corner, old house. Oh, okay. And we stayed out, you know, three, four feet from the original foundation mm -hmm. and just dug down to the uh, solid floor level uh -huh. and fill it full of stone and run it out into the ditch. Oh, it, okay, so you're filling it, it. all right. And it stopped, it stopped the water in the house. In the house, uh-huh, okay. We did the same thing up the hunts. Yeah. And it stopped all the water in okay. the house. Okay, but okay. What we did, both of them, but the uh, stuff they hunt is we dug down and put some good plastic on the wall mm -hmm. and then backfill it with uh, mm -hmm. three quarter an inch and a half stone. And the other... Did you put fabric. piles in there? We put a we put a uh, four inch drainage pipe in the bottom. The other thing that we have to keep in mind, though, with anything like that, and I I already had a conversation to start this with um, somebody up at the Division for Historic Preservation, and I don't remember her name now, but I have it in my notes. Um, she is the uh, is it the archaeologist. If we start doing and digging around there. Um, they felt like, they looked it up quickly on, online, I guess, and said, no, we don't think there's any Native American remains or anything on the grounds there, so you're probably okay. And, you know, if you're digging right around the building, you're okay. But if you find anything, you know, set it aside, Everything call stops. us. <laughs> it was like, oh, I was afraid that we were going to hear that we had to go through all kinds of, you know, archaeological whatever before we could do any kind of they work. They said, yeah, but, but it sounded like that would be the case, so that was a good thing. So, the, I might get that right from there. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. Um, and so then the other piece is the roof truss. Um, you know, towards the back of the building, there were the connections between the roof plates, I guess, were um, compromised and needed to be addressed. Um, and, and so that raises the question. Um, that was all part of the original work that Jonathan and Jessup had bid on. So what would be wonderful would be able to just go to Jonathan and say, okay, can you come back in and complete this? 
Um, and I didn't know if we could do that or if we had to go through a whole new bid process. You bid on that part of it, right? You bid on the whole job. And that's what the, that was part of the whole job that was That was out. part of the whole job initially that the bids went out for. And, and we, we, we ran low on funds and that was... And, and then we rebid it. I didn't know the, the policy in terms well, the, of the roof trust. The only time about the roof trust part, that's only five that's five thousand dollars, and I don't think do I, ten thousand minimum. There's, but there's, yeah, it's, so that's kind of tricky here because um, if you look. stabilization what they're going to do to that is going to make it solid for a long time to come. Wouldn't you agree with that? What they're going to do? Well what we our approach in, in the stabilization work that we did was when Chris wrote up the plan, he wrote up temporary stabilization and then do this. And we said we'd really like to take a much more permanent approach. So we really never did the temporary stabilization. We just went right into a more permanent solution to that whole back wall and floor. Um, but we did nothing to the roof or the attic. That, but but I'm, I'm thinking more that the, the permanent solution up there will make it more uh, Architecturally, well, architecturally uh, compliant and stuff like that. The, mm -hmm. the, the stabilization will just make it strong and, and keep it together. It won't be, you know, it, you'll be able to take it off in 50 years and redo it if the town has excess money and stuff. But is that, am I thinking wrong here that when we say stabilization, it will probably do it for as long as we need it to be done? The trusses need to be dealt with. Uh, myself, I didn't understand the prescription by the engineering outfit. I mentioned that to Chris Cole, and, and uh, I, I wasn't too clear on what his response was either. But it, 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 what is clear is that something needs to happen with those trusses because there's a joinery on some of them that's deteriorated. But if we go in there and spend five thousand dollars in five years, we're not going to have to go in there and spend fifteen to just take out what we just did and then fix it up, right? Isn't that if, kind if of If I'm understanding what Sherry's saying, that, that, that it's, it's, it's more of a permanent. I think it's more of like we might have to spend 15 and then we don't have to go back in. And I don't know if that's the number. So but why would you want to spend $5,000 just to say five years down the road and you spend another $15,000? Well, I, I, would, uh, I wouldn't. But yeah. I, what I'm saying is right. I think that the, the $5,000 solution may secure it and make mm -hmm. it fine, mm -hmm. it just won't be architecturally the same as it was in 18. 
And I don't think architecturally is the same as what we're looking at here. I mean, if you look at, um, well, let's just see. What, what he says here from roof trusses under the um, stabilization piece was removing the balance of the brick chimney, chimney and redistributing the loads um, from the second floor across the bottom courts. Because that's one of the concerns I think he had in the whole assessment piece was um, how that weight was distributed. And if you look um, so these pages 17, 18, 19, and 20, what, when is this document from? It's from the structural assessment part two, which is here. Okay. I just wanted to pull the That's, parts okay. for tonight that we were talking about. And this was done in um, August of 2015. And there are connections of the, you know, the, the roof plate connections that need to be addressed, which is where I think the 15,000 comes from in this list of yeah, reinforcing see, I, and connections. I would think that, that the stabilization that they would, the connections would be what they would go to fix and then mm -hmm. maybe we should have a little more clarity on that um, as to what you know, what the two different options are right. going forward. So. And, and um, I reached out to Jonathan Jessup just to see if he was available and interested in having a conversation about it, and he is out of the country, or at least he was at the time. He emailed me back, so um, he's very interested in talking about further involvement in the building, so he'll be in touch with me when he gets back. Okay. When he just travels. So what is listed here is everything that needs to be done. Yes. Okay. It's concerning me because it's two hundred thousand dollars. Well, yeah, I know it was concerning me too. Um, and what you know, some of this was looking at were we going to go back? You know, like one of his things was, well, you can either stabilize that wood wall or you can rebuild it as a brick wall. You know, so that was like seventy-five thousand dollars versus ten. You know, so if you look at that entire project or report, I think you'll get a better picture of that. I think he was listing out the things that were on there and not saying that we needed to do all of them, but there were options going through. And there was, there was documentation um, expenses listed in there that $10,000 for measured drawings and all of that, we just put that one right off the table. So this was a a more extensive um, place to start and then say, okay, what's, what do we absolutely need to do? Um, so you'll see on the west wall, he said $75,000 or restore what existed. And that's the option we went for. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, was, I was on vacation in Maine, sitting, reading this on my tablet, going, oh my god. I'm trying to like mentally adding up all these numbers, and then I talked to Chris, and it was like, okay, good. I can. I think maybe we can chip away at it. Um, all right. So why don't we why don't we leave it at this? When the snow melts, you and Tom go up, up there, there, look it over, decide mm -hmm. if if it is something the town can do, mm -hmm. and if not, then we'll have to go further with that. But if we yeah. can. So Tom, do you just need for the snow to melt, or do you need all the frost to be out of the ground so you can? Well, get the snow to be on it. Okay. You should be able to see what's out there, see what just kind of right. needs to be done, um, and then just give us some clarity on the the trusses, yep. the difference between the five and the fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I certainly think taking down the old chimney that's half gone there now. Why not take that down and? It, that that's a labor cost, but it's a weight off of the building, yeah. so it's you know. Yeah. So I mean, that should come down. It's not yeah. 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 And what about the um, access for and the agreement? Do you have any thoughts on that? Do is there an other strategy to use for that? Do you have? I mean, they were very reasonable with us mm -hmm. the last time, so I would think that we would 
that reasonable view, just go with that and yeah. see if they will allow us in there to mm -hmm. do what we need to that reasonable view. I, I think, you know, unless we, unless they don't want us there again. And to my knowledge, that it hasn't changed, right, in terms of the status of that property? No, it has. It, I mean, the status of that property has not changed. It hasn't changed. It's yeah. still under the estate. Of right. It. Um, did you, did we want to set up a meeting between the, the meeting house and the housing committee and hash out the, the, the amount there that the housing grant committee gave? Is there a good time to do that? Or? I, I'm not sure what a good time is going to be for that in terms of, I certainly I don't know what Janet's schedule is, but I know, um, Candace and Pam are very difficult to schedule. Um, we have... The third Monday of the month is our meeting. Um, that might be a night if it was possible to do that, but... Um, Are your members usually there on the third Monday of the month? Pardon me? Uh, is everyone usually there? That's what we're aiming for. Um, it looks like that would be the case this coming Monday. It won't be the case. It will be the case. And that's enough time to warn it. Well, it doesn't actually have to be warned if it's just a housing committee. Well, it should be. But it should be. But I'm saying there's plenty of time. It's Thursday. Yeah. Um, well, Mondays usually don't work for you, though. They, they don't work for me, and I don't know if Steve uh, is around. Steve is back. He, he is back. Yeah. Okay. I'm fine with that. If you want to get out of um, uh, yeah. what times are the meetings? Our meetings are at 6.30. 6.30. 6.30? So I just need to warn that? Yeah, just put up the housing grant. Yeah, I'll do that. So November 19th? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure that. And you'll let your members know? Mm -hmm. Well, they just already got help because it's a meeting. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, anything else? Sure. I don't think so. I think that pretty much covers the basis. Don? Um, emergency management is something I'd like to, to uh, return to spending more time with uh, in the next two years. That's just kind of a background for some of the things I want to discuss. Um, oh gosh, the uh, oh yeah, uh, on cemeteries, um, the commission needs to redouble its efforts this year uh, to get, get the finishing touches to the West Cemetery expansion. I'd like to get together with Tom. I need a little help from him with the with the. Uh, with the fence and the gates and then the, I, I have to, there's, there's some other details that I have to figure out. Um, I think it's, it's November or December we, we met and uh, uh, we, we started looking into moving the, uh, the, the, the cemetery CD money into a, a, a mutual fund type of arrangement. And, uh, Life has gotten in the way from that point to now, so there, there's been no progress on that. So it's supposed to look, look a little further into that. Um, uh, and, and we're also, uh, we, uh, the, the commission felt that we, we'd like to go back to being autonomous, but there, there were legal questions that I was tasked with getting the answer to, and I have not been able to chase that down either. Um, on the uh, Union High School Board, um, this is my last year on the board. My term expires uh, March 2019. Uh, I, I will not be, uh, you know, I will not be uh, accepting a nomination for the election and that. So I'd like to get the town notice that we need another town rep to the Union High School board. And, uh, I think two thirds of the people in town I don't even know. So I'm, so I'm hoping the word will get out and that uh, we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll find somebody to step up. From, uh, we can put that in the opinion as well. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, honestly, the next couple of years, I'm really uh, starting to really look now towards the 30 and 40 somethings and asking these people, you know, what what vision do you have of the future of this town? So, anyway, uh, uh, okay, on the uh, on the town office stuff. 
the selectmen at that time uh, felt more comfortable only with building uh, the uh, the uh, Athens we have the board of school directors um, really did not uh, help us out a lot. I didn't feel at the time. So I, I mean, you know, if that was then, this is now. Well, I certainly don't think we all stop what we're doing on this with, you know, white trips in the walls. And the well, we, we, we started these projects, should, should, should see them through, but I'm, I'm, I'm feeling on the big picture that it seems like a good time for me to take my marching orders from somebody else rather than dollars from the state of Vermont, you still have a twenty-nine thousand dollar pot of money now. Um, but but the other thing, other than town meeting, this building works fine for town office, for listeners. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the heating costs for this compared to the heating costs for that. And, you know, other than one day a year, and, I mean I think this building works works perfectly for Because um, you cannot vote to switch from a uh, calendar year to a fiscal year and vote on that budget at the same meeting. Okay. So what we're thinking of is in March 2019, voting on it. Voting on it to switch it to the fiscal year starting 2020. 2020. Okay. And doing an 18-month budget. For 2020, that will carry us. It would actually be a six month and a 12 month, but technically it's an 18 month budget. Because if you look at it now, you know, calendar year starts January. We have town meeting in March. We don't collect taxes till September. So you're already in the ninth month of the year. No, but I didn't know if you were planning for 19 no, or 20. No, we're gonna we're gonna propose it March 1919, 2019, and then um, started that following year. Okay. We figured it'd be just as easy. It would save on a lot of headaches. I know it seems a long way away, but that gives us enough time to get everything in a row. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the switchover is going to be the the problem. That having the the calendar year to a fiscal year that once it's in place. Once it's in place, it's that'll it's be a piece fine. Of cake. It's just setting up the budget for an eighteen month budget. But 
with the news programs and stuff, I think it's going to be a lot easier, much easier than it. And if you think about it, before. you know, we don't collect taxes until September anyway. So the first three quarters of the year is already paid for from the money we collected the year before. So it actually won't add anything onto our budget. We'll still be using prior year's money, but so it is going to take place. It's just going to be a while. Um, anything else? No, that was it. Okay. are finishing up the year. Okay. It ends April 1st for us, well, March it's, 30th. Hey, that, it actually starts then, doesn't it? But well, that's when the new year starts, but um, finishing up for this previous year. Mm -hmm. We have a... One viewing schedule is for tomorrow, and we might have one more, but there are some people that have not responded to letters. Okay. All right, we'll move you, on. You can do it. Okay. Well, when they don't respond to letters, and we know that there's been a change, we do what we call a curbside evaluation. We make assumptions. And usually once they get our letter telling them what the assumptions were, they're more than willing to let us come and view the property. That's how it works. All right, move on to roads, I guess. And we've got this uh, uh, fleet permit for United Natural Foods. Do I make a motion to sign that? That will be fine. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We all know the road divide. Uh, the trucks are all running good. We just took one to Willie to uh, had broken holes last night. Got that fixed. So everything's running good. I got some gravel. Mason has just called up and uh, said that they are making the gravel now. So. When I get ready to get gravel, I'll get it from them because it's $4 a year cheaper. Um, so that's an extra $10,000 to go a little further. Right. Other than that, we're just playing with Mother Nature. We got these to sign for, uh, that is the grant agreement for the paving. We've got to sign. Mm -hmm. And then the three of us are going to sign this. This is a bridge road standard. All right. I'll make a motion to. Uh, mm -hmm. Is this to accept the grant? To oh, accept that, the grant. No, that's just to, that's the paperwork and send them to get the grant. But that, is that for a second? Mm, yep, yeah, that's it says. Is that for paving thirty-five? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So will that be this summer? Mm -hmm. Hopefully. Okay, Actually, another the, article. the state, well, well, don't put it in yet, okay. because okay. the only thing is holding it up right now, I'll call you when I get, okay. the only thing is holding up right now is the state of the law is changing, <laughs> changing uh, some of the standards mm -hmm. that we're going to go by. Mm -hmm. They guaranteed me we got the grant. It's just the paperwork and all being mm -hmm. held up. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this is, I've got an estimate right now, it's got to go on down to uh, Dumbaston and then they send that stuff in and then they all go out for bits. Well you tell me when you're ready for it to probably when we get the grant go we'll out and remember out. we don't publish after June, June so oh hopefully it'll be long before that so. <laughs> all right we made a motion to I made a motion to uh, sign the municipal grant application uh, for fiscal year 2019 second Second. All right, second. All those in favor? All right. The 20th. 20th. Yeah, fiscal year. For the fiscal year, that will be July 1st. So then we won't get. Yeah, we'll get the money. That, that's for, uh, it says there somewhere that it's for 18 and 19. Okay. Because it's a two year, two year thing. If we didn't have the money to back up, back up the grant money, we could raise it next year in taxes, but we have that money. Okay. Already, already raised. And do you need this back? Yeah. Or just 
Do, yep. do you want I'm, Darlene to make a copy or keep a copy here? The state will send us back one. Okay. What's your address out there? 56. And as far as the upper road is concerned, Green Mountain Power's done with all their poles and everything, so they won't be in the way of the paving, correct? Perfect. Actually, what we're paving, they've done that two years ago. Okay. That's the bridge agreement. Just going to put the date in there. You're going to sign it there day to day. And and uh, then he's going to sign it. Right. Have you been down? Oh, that's no. Not. Okay. no. So I need to send this back, David? Yes. Okay. I'll make a motion that we uh, sign the Certificate of Compliance for Town Road and Bridge Standards and Network Inventory. Second. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's uh, annual report. We just got to sign that. So, Tom, does Darlene need to make a copy of this to save or no? She should probably save that. She should. Okay. Yeah. This is for the There's annual. another one waiting. And this one here, that's She's got to take that. He's got to take this down into the. This okay. is then take the down report. Does she want to copy this one? No, not until she gives it back. Okay. Gotcha. So. anything about it now but I've had several people and I don't know if it's been taken care of because I don't go that way too often. On the way to Townsend just as you go down the hill there there's that huge huge bump. A, a hole type of thing. <laughs> more of a bump. <laughs> well, it was a bump. It was a hole. And so, it was well, we filled hole. the hole. Okay. Like, well, I, like I said I haven't been down there in a while. What's got to be done is this summer got to go up in and a piece of that black top out. There's got to be another piece of lake down in there because this room's cold weather come. We had it pretty good. I dug out a big chunk. Yeah. Then it heaved up. And then it's on, so we went out and filled it. So we got a cut out of the block top out. There's got to be another hook of legs in there that the frog is shoving up. Okay. Yeah. Well, I was just brought to my attention, and I said I would mention it to you. So. Yeah, it does bump there when you go over it, but nothing to do with it now. No, I, I, that I understand. All right. Let's go. Yeah. I do. I like it. Because that's how I'm excited. I understand. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
side. Somebody will read them and say, yeah. oh, so I know we know what went on here. You got much salt up there? The salt company don't even have any right now. That's where we've been going. We were saying that the last time that we didn't build no wood and salt. Them. But I've been promised a lot of good next week. It's supposed to be another storm. Just think of all the other time again. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, actually, Matthew and I have been getting so much of that that we took Tuesday, last Tuesday out, and then we're taking tomorrow out. Yeah. <laughs> Signed in blood here. 
Right. Yeah, but I don't think that's not, you know, it's not reason, unreasonable to, if they want it delivered or hand mail, to do it that way. Others can just pick it up here. I mean, certainly there are people that probably can't make it in here that they fill out a slip, but they just get a list of them. Comments on agenda. Nope. Tom said we all know the roads are bad. Uh, Reed Road between the quality of materials that are added to that road after the 2006 flood and, uh, and Irene in 2011. Um, that that road is, is is so much more able to uh, handle mud season. I mean, you know, I could say it gets a little white up, but nothing like it used to be. If you say that, Don, um, just let's hope that's the way it is this year, too. Oh, I, I, mean, I don't think the problem with the weather is this month. I think it was the fog we had in January and February. That's what killed us. I remember around and then, and then you get storm after storm, you don't, it don't dry enough so I can do anything with them before they're so wet that I can't touch them. But, uh, it, you know, that the, I mean, you know, there, 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 there's, there, there's money involved, but uh, well, we, we, get, we, get, we get so much better quality. Yeah, the end result is so much better because it, it not, not only makes the road better, it cuts down on grading time, it stays in place, and you get the drainage out of it. Well, they, uh, they, by the way, this, this last storm, we got uh, two feet at Marlboro College, which makes uh, 64 inches in the 11 days with the three nor'easters. Um, I, you know, I don't have my four-wheel drive pickup truck uh, on the road at this point, so I, I rely on my Honda Civic to get me in there to plow, and I never have to worry about getting out of my driveway at, at, at 4.30 in the morning. It's Tom and, and Matt are, uh, always get that road clear. Yep. That, 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 you know, that, that's not going unappreciated. I hear him go by the house. Well, I do the plow at night anyways. You get out there, you tell them this guy coming to get out there before the traffic gets on it, you just pack down, you can get it cleaned off, and it's just so much easier to get up at 3 in the morning. And then when the traffic starts, we're getting 90% of it out of the way, so let the traffic go and then go back out and finish it. All right. I make a motion that we adjourn. adjourn. I will second that. All those in favor? All right. So you will not be able to